Thanks for taking out the time to join us on this Friday edition of Network Africa. Coming up on the program, the United Nations votes on whether to intervene militarily in South Sudan despite the dangers which threaten them. Then Kenya approves oil production plans and will commence refining crude soon. We take a look at how the Nigeria Abuja Kaduna train service is marking its latest step in infrastructure revival. Thanks again for joining us on Network Africa. I'm Cynthia Are. Despite the threats posed by the South Sudan crisis, the United Nations, that's the Security Council, is scheduled to vote today on deploying a 4,000 strong regional force to the world's newest country. However, the vote may be delayed as negotiations continue over a draft resolution presented by the United States. On his part, the United Nations humanitarian chief, Stephen O'Brien, says the situation he witnessed, specifically in Wow and Awil, was representative of the devastating fate that has befallen South Sudan. I also reiterated the need for humanitarians to be granted free, safe and unhindered access to all people in need, wherever they may be, and for humanitarian workers and their assets to be respected. Humanitarian workers are saving lives while risking their own, and I am appalled that they continue to be harassed, targeted, and killed. When I visited last year, 27 of our colleagues had sadly lost their lives, and many more were missing and unaccounted for. Today, the number of aid workers killed since December 2013 is 57. This is unacceptable and unconscionable. And I urge the President to take immediate action to end the impunity that has prevailed to date. The United Nations Humanitarian Chief Stephen O'Brien. Now the Kenyan government has approved a plan to start producing crude oil with a goal of reaching up to 4,000 barrels a day as the nation seeks to tap its newly discovered oil resources. As part of the plan, infrastructure will be upgraded to allow trucks to ferry the oil to the main port in Mombasa. According to a statement from the President's Communications Department on Thursday, the Tulo Oil PLC that has a plan that will see that the potential to, for, of Kenya to deliver 2,000 barrels a day in the second half of 2017 is met. Tulo discovered oil in Kenya back in 2012 and estimates there are 750 million barrels of recoverable resources. Joining us from the Kenyan capital is the lead consultant for Sovereign Insight, Mr. Vincent Kimisop. Mr. Kimisop, thank you very much for your time. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Now, 2,000 barrels a day is a lot. Can you fill us in on more details as regards this crude oil production in Kenya? Um, the, as you are aware, that uh, Kenya has been doing exploration for some time, and now uh, it was successful to uh, locate oil in, uh, in, uh, uh, through the drilling company that is Tamo. And uh, it's actually been a subject that the point of the fire. So what uh, Tano Oil has done is that uh, they have already done the drilling and the oil is already on the surface. But the challenge has been transportation so that uh, we, the country can be able to market it. So what has happened is that uh, because of the delay in finalizing the infrastructure, getting the oil through the Lamo port, mm -hmm. the cabinet has approved the transportation through a two model process. That is both using rail and transport to get it to the port of Mombasa. It is an exciting news, of course, uh, not as really exciting as it, uh, it was expected that uh, the last project was going to be uh, a facilitator of this. But uh, when Uganda and the look and the problems of South Sudan, 
that Kenya needed to make progress. Well, Mr. Kimisov, we also understand, like you mentioned earlier, that the cabinet has also approved the development of a pipeline from the exploration fields in, um, in the north of Lamu. Can you tell us more about that? Or from the country's north to Lamu, I should have said that. It is Lamu, uh, Lamu, uh, Ethiopia, South Sudan, Lapis project. So we it will also, it was meant to have a pipeline, a rail line, and a, and a road uh, system. So it's to facilitate the oil uh, to get to the port of Lamu. But now there is a challenge uh, because uh, South Sudan, the challenge is that the current is going. And also Uganda pulled out of the joint initiative. And therefore that's why Kenya uh, is opting to use both uh, roads and railways. So they will move the oil from Turkana, that's the northern part of the yeah. country, uh, to a little by road. And then they will also move it uh, from Eldoret to Mombasa by, by train. So a very huge uh, investment. But uh, it is, it is it, it's going through uncharted water. So hopefully it will help uh, and yield uh, return on the investment that the country is making. So how big is this for the Kenyan economy? Uh, it's not much because as you're aware that this is the, the first time we have an oil to the part of our GDP contribution. Mainly our economy is agro-based and small fashion and, and Big on the service sector. Okay. So it's a new area that Kenya is getting into. We do not know much. Kenyans are uh, uh, mainly uh, cautious and optimistic about it. Okay. Well, Mr. Vincent Kimisop, the lead consultant for Sovereign Insight, thank you very much for joining us on Network Africa. Well, in other news, Nigeria has started a commuter train service linking its administrative capital, Abuja to major hub Kaduna in a move expected to open areas along the route. A ton of work is now going into expanding infrastructure, including transport and power, to help diversify the economy and alleviate poverty. Commuters in Nigeria are enjoying travel with ease on the newly launched transit railway linking the country's capital, Abuja, to the northern city of Kaduna. Many commuters say it saves on travel time and offers an alternative to what would otherwise be a three-hour bumpy ride by road. The 186.5-kilometer standard gate truck built by the China Railway Construction Corporation was finally completed seven years after the project kicked off while former President Hubert Jonathan was still in office. The Abuja Kaduna route has nine stations with travel time set at one hour, 30 minutes for both passenger and cargo trains. I expect us to get to Abuja safely. We're having a really nice ride. It's so comfortable. There's really no shock. You know, it's really smooth. We're enjoying ourselves and the AC is good. We even have movie. It's really nice. The train service was launched in July by President Muhammad Buhari. To fund the project, 500 million U.S. dollars was provided by the China Exim Bank as a concessionary loan, while the government paid 374 million U.S. dollars as past funding. It impacts on agriculture and the economy, as agricultural produce are conveyed from Kaduna to Abuja at much cheaper rates. Transportation is also provided for majority of Nigerians who live between Kano and Abuja at a cheaper rate. I hope that when the Kaduna Abuja road is maintained, it would last longer as heavy cargo is now conveyed by rail. The train, which can travel at a speed of 150 kilometers per hour, commutes twice daily from Abuja to Kaduna. Nigeria's government is looking to pursue a 25-year strategic railway master plan that will see construction of new rail lines across the country. The train service brings back memories of a once efficient railway system in the country. In those days, we used to have train stations, and we just walk in and say, you know, children travel with our mother and our dads to our bar to Umuahia, to Enugu, you know, before everything, you know, came to a stop. So we thank God that it's back and in a modern way. So we appreciate the government and we pray that uh, it will be sustained. Nigeria is overly reliant on its crude oil export business and massive investment is needed to help diversify its economy and alleviate poverty.
Good news for Egypt as the IMF approves a $12 billion loan for the North African country. That's in a moment.